All right. Okay. Sometimes my wounds are self-inflicted out. <laughs> right now. So I thought you were deathly ill or something when you no, ate I, I, I turned my beef in pasta from Awake 180 into beef with cayenne pepper, actual ground up hot Honduran chilies, and uh, Frank's Red Hot. And I... Um, I, bur- I damaged myself. I actually feel burning in my stomach lining currently, but that's fine. But it's self-inflicted. This is how low it was. Not only that, but I spilled soup on my white t-shirt, my Odyssey t-shirt. <coughs> so, this, I, although I've lost 50 pounds, I have not killed the glutton. <laughs> and I was whacking out that soup and, uh, and just absolutely hurting myself. And every sip I took, oil... From the soup, because we have olive oil that we put mm-hmm. in, was getting, uh, carrying peppers and cayenne down the sides of my throat, past my thing that stops stuff from going down there, <laughs> <clears throat> into my windpipe, and destroying me. So I am now destroyed. I, I now have um, consumption <clears throat> and an ulcer. Um, and then this is this is perfect. I put mushrooms in it, a canned mushrooms. Uh huh. I have new sneakers with them with the, the <laughs> mesh tops. Open one of the cans of mushrooms. Water from it falls right into the mesh of my sneaker, where my feet had been nice and insulated and warm. Then, as I went over to the microwave to clean the microwave, with, holding my soup, the soup spilled out of the bowl of a little bit of it, right into the other mesh sneaker, and. So now both feet are a little wet. One with soup, which is a great feeling. One with <laughs> mushroom juice. I can't believe you're allowed to tell this story, and I'm not allowed to tell people about my boob doctor's appointment. Because people like breasts when they're talking about sexualizing. So, them. but people like this, who gives a crap like about your stupid mushroom and soup in your shoes story? Yes, Alice, because I've been keeping a log on this podcast for more than two years of how God f's me, and here's one of them. <laughs> And I screwed myself, too. So I had a hand in this. But the, the shoes were him. That was all him. Okay. Uh, you want to talk about your breasts, go ahead. But nobody wants to talk about okay, your bre- getting a breast exam, Alice. Fine. That sucks. Well, That's fine. bad use of breasts. We're not going to talk about the – what's the guy What's the guy who does the, the other thing? <laughs> we're not talking about that either. We're, we're not, we're not, we don't want to think about steely instruments and, cl- and, no steely and, and uh, clinical fluorescent doctor's knives. What is wrong with you? <laughs> There's no That's doctor's knives. 5070 Project. You guys can talk about all that stuff okay. and you know, try to interpret your okay. dreams for 30 minutes. <laughs> Jesus, you, I'm not making this into a chick show. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus. People really God. wanted to hear about your hot God. peppers and mushrooms going into your shoes, though. Yeah. That is excellent no, and important y- content that everybody needs to know. Right. It doesn't mean we make the show gay, Alice. We, we, <laughs> we're t- t- it's a guy's show and for okay. ladies. Sorry. Jesus. Sorry. You drive the ship, okay? What are you going to talk about your breast exam? What would, what is the like fun? I just user thought you would want to know that... that I have very dense breasts. Apparently, <clears throat> what does that mean? I don't know, but they get less dense as you get was older. The, who was the technician who felt your breast? A female or male? It was a doctor, T- not whatever. a technician. Whatever. <laughs> she what? has a medical okay, degree. Okay, so the doctor was a woman. Yes. Do tell. <laughs> Can you give me the doctor's name? <clears throat> no. Give me the doctor's name. I'm not name. giving you the doctor's was she attractive? name. Was she attractive? No. Are you sure? <laughs> yes. And did was it all very clinical, or was she was was did you did you feel that she was trying to uh, make it erotic? She was not trying to make it erotic. Well, then <laughs> the exit said... is right there. That's, that's <clears throat> so anyway, so did you derive pleasure from the experience physically? Not in that way. Ooh, in what way? <laughs> in the way where I was glad to be uh, getting at the root. Of my breast issues and there's no there... breast issues, <laughs> Alice. I'm trying to. I'm uh, gonna get a mammogram Alice, next. Alice, I'm Colonel Tom Parker. You're Elvis. You're my product I'm here, awareness. Alice. I'm, t- I'm obviously you know though she trying to use she you shamed here. me for being old though. She did. Yeah. So, she was like, "We're gonna get a mammogram because you know you're not 20 anymore." You gonna call her a bitch when that happens, Alice, and walk out? Um. Okay. Hi. What's yeah. going on? I'm sorry. I swore, Aunt Cyril. 
Um, Can we do this so Bed. Yes, we can when we're in bed. Okay, I'll talk to you. That later. was a good. You got the piece of business done. Yep. What was we're it? picking a bedtime story. That's all. What was the story? He wants to read Calvin and Hobbes comics at bedtime. Oh, well, they like good. that. All right. Now, since you're not going to do anything interesting with your press story, I guess we're going to put Mark it in the chat says girls can be doctors. Yeah, not really. I would never trust her, but unless can you shut that. Thank you. <clears throat> Did you think about kissing her? No. Come on. No. Come on. No. I didn't think about kissing her. God, girls are so lame. I know. I know. Very so boring. Lame. I was sodomized at my appointment, Alice. <laughs> at least my doctor's experience, any any went further in once I made a pain noise. <laughs> at least my doctor's experience is they interesting. They only do that if they really like you. Jeez. Well, my, I found out my breasts are dense. And Ugh. I didn't have a lump, but she wasn't oh, sure because my We're breasts are so about, dense. What is this, Sally Jesse Raphael? I'm raising awareness. I don't care, Alice. If I change my name to Cancer Cancerton, we're never talking about cancer in possibility exams. Or whatever. That's 1570 Project. Okay. <sighs> what are you thinking? <laughs> what, what kind of you? mind would say, you know what, I bet you people, you know where they want to be? They want to be to my doctor's exam that's not sexual at all. It has to do with breast cancer. I think that's where people want to be. Jesus. Well, I just thought people maybe would want an update that I uh, don't have just apparently else. breast cancer, probably. No, no, nobody wants that update. Nobody wants to know your cancer status. <laughs> Why don't they? You're to be objectified, Alice. You're to look pretty and have breasts. We're not to, we don't want to see the back end, anything, how, what happens backstage. If I do get cancer, By I'm the way, totally blaming it on the you know what too. Oh, good. You're not allowed to say vaccine. Oh, because it will uh, get canceled. Yeah, we'll get uh, kicked which off is, YouTube. Which absolutely, totally, and utterly works. And I've got several of them, <laughs> and I'm going to get several more. CVS Pharmacy just told me to get my <laughs> another. Someone in the chat said, "What do Alice's breasts and her husband have in common?" I don't know. <laughs> what did I just say about my breasts like three oh, times? <laughs> it's going to, we're, we're getting snow and sleet tomorrow, mm -hmm. which means you need to go back onto your roof and secure your tarp because it's it'll get it'll blow off. Okay, I'll add more. What time is no, it snowing add more? and sleeting? Add more, like I'll tack it down more. I would just put heavy stuff on it. Like those cans yeah. that used to be on it. Okay. You know what I mean? All right, Alice, this is the funny thing that's going on here. Okay. The Republicans have a majority in the House. The Republicans have won the House. Yes. By one vote. By one seat. I thought they were saying, yeah, 219, right? That's right. what they have so far? Yeah. You know, in a, in a company of 400 people, people leave all the time. Sometimes for health reasons, sometimes for this, whatever. There's very rarely is the House full. Mm -hmm. Usually it's lagging some people. Yeah. They, we could be going back and ping-ponging who the Speaker of the House is. Yeah, it's very close. And not only that, what's really funny is um, what political party do you think won the, quote, this doesn't really exist, but if we're calling it that, the House popular vote? Yeah, the Republicans did. Right. So right? actually, and so, and so there are some bright spots here, right, where there are some great people who won. Like John James in Michigan, I was excited to see he won. He's a great guy. He's run before for Senate, I believe. Um, you know, there's some great candidates out there that did win their races in the House, and and it looks like the Republicans will have a very slim majority at least. But um, they only are going to have probably a two percent majority in the House, where they won the popular vote by four percentage points. They also did make gains with Latino and Black voters, um, and they also they won a lot of different demo they won married women married men and unmarried men the only demographic like that that they didn't win is unmarried women can you what do you need to go play right now hey buddy do you need my phone do you need my phone of course okay all right we'll see you later take that downstairs take it downstairs please thank you okay can we shut that now thank you um Carrie Lake looks like has lost. Yeah, that's probably true. But again, she 
underperformed congressional Republicans quite a bit in Arizona. So she did points worse than them. And actually, the statewide candidate for treasurer, who was a Republican, won in that state. So it's not impossible to win these races as a Republican. You know, it's it's not all cheating. It's the same set of ballots going into the ballot box, right? And Republicans are winning on those same ballots that Carrie Lake lost on and Blake Masters lost on and everything. What do they have in common? Yeah, it's a it's a Trump thing. Right. Clearly. And. It's and he's un- announcing tomorrow, which just sucks. Yeah. So, you know what? <clears throat> you, the, you know, Michael Graham's uh, theory may have mm-hmm. to come into practice soon. So what do you think, though? Uh, this is my question for you, is does he buck the Republican Party? So new polling just came out. This is like starting to see the first post-election polling of the Republican primary field. And DeSantis has surged way above Trump. In really? In what I've seen so far. Yes. So, um What's his name? Eric Erickson, I think. Um, he was tweeting this today. Let me go back here. Yeah. So in some, so immediately prior to this election, Trump was leading the primary yeah. field hugely in every single poll that was out there. But now they've subsequently done new polling, and and it's now DeSantis up. You know. So do you, here's, know, do you have a number? Here's one. It's just head-to-head head, those growth two. is So here they have, um, there's a bunch of polls. So here's one. Here's Iowa. Here's early primary state polls. Iowa, DeSantis 48, Trump 37. New Hampshire, DeSantis 52, Trump 37. Florida, DeSantis 56, Trump 30. Trump, Georgia, Trump, never won, Trump did win New Hampshire primary in yes. 2016. Yes. Uh, and, and Bernie did too. Georgia, DeSantis 55, Trump 35. Did you say Florida? Yes. 56, 56, 30. Holy um, hell. So that's that one. There was a general, like a nationwide one, too, that I'm looking for that was here. And, of course, I didn't send it to us. But once again, it, I, I believe that one had DeSantis in the 40s, maybe 42, and Trump 37 or something like that. Yeah, here it is. Twenty. Or this is the Texas... Republican primary, 28-point shift towards DeSantis in three weeks. In Texas, DeSantis, 43, Trump, 32, Pence, 5, Haley, 4, Tim Scott, 1, Pompeo, 1. Without Trump in there, DeSantis gets 66 and Pence gets 8. So there is starting to be a massive shift in the narrative here because I think a lot of people are tired of losing races. I mean, like, that that's the problem. That's the problem. You can like Trump all day. And I think he was a good, um, I think he was a good president, to be honest with you. But clearly, he is poison at the ballot box. And it's starting to make me wonder if, honestly, like, I don't know. Maybe he was the only person who could have done it in 2016. But, like, maybe he wasn't. I don't know. New Burn Barrel poll, Tom Shattuck poll out. Uh, who should be the nominee? Just, just tweeted it out just a moment ago. New Tom Shattuck poll? You tweeted a poll? Just tweeted a poll. That's right. That's right. I'll so, tweet from So, I mean, I do, think, I do think there's still a strong contingent of people who do not want to dump Trump. But I also think that there is – this isn't – you can't be tied to the candidate who should have been there last time. And, like, far, far too often Republicans do this where they nominate, like, the last guy, not – the guy whose moment is mm-hmm. right now, and DeSantis's moment is right now, truly. So absolutely, I and mean, they make it. Charles C. W. Cook, who's got a great podcast, he made the point that like there was no, it had to be Romney in 2016, and you know there was no that it had to be McCain in 2012. Yeah, we don't owe you the right. presidential <laughs> nomination. You don't get it till you win. Right. And, you know, I think Trump does feel that way. So but my question to you is, in the context of this shift that's happening right now, right, does Trump kick the Republican Party to the curb and say he's running independent? In the spirit of doing the most toxic and divisive thing he could possibly do, I'm I mean, afraid I that know. he's going to try and do that. Well, I mean, I think it would probably have to do with. I mean, would he want to dismantle or lose some of the state machinery that he had? Well, that's true. So, you know, with the RNC behind you, you do have a lot of organization. You're going to make sh- the party is going to make sure that you like get on all the appropriate ballots. You need to have a ground game to run independent. You need to make sure that you're meeting all the deadlines to get on the ballots in all the states. You need to make sure there's a lot of stuff you have to do here, right? 
you have to do some of that in a primary too, but the RNC comes with its own organizing power. I think there, I mean, there's already a push to get rid of McConnell. Uh, Rick Scott in Florida is saying that he wants to be considered for um, Senate Majority Leader. <sighs> and He is a nothing. He thinks it's his moment, I guess. I don't know. But He's been terrible. I mean, a... so th- there's, but there are people saying, there are people Wait, saying Rick, they want to hold Scott was, a... was in charge of Senate races around the country. He was in the DS, whatever, I mean, Republican Senatorial Committee, whatever. Right, he right. Was, he blew. He coughed up the Senate. He's a piece of crap. He sucks. I hate him. So anyway, it he's going out there. But a lot of Republicans mm. are now saying they want to delay the leadership elections until after everybody's in there. Wait, what does Rick Scott want to do? He wants to be considered for um uh what's it called majority Senate majority leader. Oh yeah. Or Senate minority leader. I guess. Sorry, it was we didn't get the. Sadly, we did not get the majority Senate minority leader. Yeah. But, well, who cares who's the minority leader? No, you still get you still in charge of your caucus. Like Mitch McConnell's done a lot in, you know, controlling his rowdy bunch of senators. But, you know, is it, it is he part of the problem here? And I, I I do think he is part of the problem here in why things got lost. I mean, he's extremely unpopular. Also, McConnell. Yeah. No, hey, actually, he did you know have, what? His day is gone too. He I mean, did he, have his he huge Trump pack with great, lots of money. He and Trump did a great job. Hitting the gas on the judges, yeah. But uh, yeah, I have no, I have no reason for him. But you know, now that we don't have, he's also one hundred and forty. What isn't he just right? Exactly, and that's the thing. So it, I mean, I think it's time for a full shakeup. I think Ronna McDaniel absolutely has to go. You can't oversee this. She's already announced that she's running for re-election to be. She wants to be the um. Whatever it is of the chair of the RNC again, which like why? But I again, I consider her essentially at this point a Trump person. I know she's an establishment person, but I also feel that because this has been the Trump Republican Party now for six years, this is it, like Trump is the establishment. So when you say we're going to get rid of Trump and all the Trump people, you're also saying that. I mean, like Kevin McCarthy's a Trump person. He shouldn't be in there either, right? Like, is, isn't this all of them? Don't they all have to go? At this point, aren't we looking for a new Republican Party now? That's my feeling. Interesting. But- you went to your uh, attractive female doctor today and trending. See what's trending? What's trending? Lesbians. It's not because of me. Uh, no. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway. Who so- knew? Well, actually, it should be bisexual because you were all over Mike Geary last night. Okay. Well, I mean, did you not? Did you or did you not say? I said he, he always looks, looks. He always looks good. You said what? It's illegal to notice that said, people. He's a first very all, pulled all, together you, guy. You said, Mike looks good. Mike always looks good. And the second <laughs> one was supposed to be just to yourself, but it was out loud. <laughs> Why? I just said he always looks good. And I like how you call him Mike. What am I supposed to call him? Isn't oh, I don't know. Name? Well, if you have a crush on somebody, you would call them Mike. Mike. Well, if you don't have a crush on them, you can also call little him. notebook, what a little you, heart, Mike and what Alice. You, what do you call him? I call him uh, Mike. <laughs> Aha. Yeah, but I do it. I don't say he always look. <laughs> Mike looks good. He always looks very put together. He's he always looks no. Good. It, I don't get it, but that's mm-hmm. okay. He looks put together. Yeah. I. Okay. You've obviously you have proven that you've <laughs> got some perception things happening. That's fine. That's fine. <clears throat> Am I very handsome? Yes. There we go. So yes, I rest you're my tall. Case. You have great hair. You have huge blue intense eyes that look at me all intense. You you're very handsome, and I love you. And you're getting skinnier all uh, the time. I better get a good report card. When this is week? your report card this week? Wednesday. Wednesday? Yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, so okay, let's get back to politics. So, this is such a tenuous thing. It, in a sense, I'm almost since since we coughed this up and it was such a terrible election. Yeah, it is funny though. Like, remember in 2016 on on November 8th, in 2016, mm-hmm. during the day, the talk was the autopsy Republicans would have to do in the permanent, um, you know, irrelevancy that having nominated Trump and 
w- it was going to lead to. And the soul searching Republicans would have to do. The next day, it was the Democrats who had to do soul searching. They were they were disseminated. They were destroyed as a. And yeah. Then it happened this time too. I mean, these things are it's never the end of the world. You know what's incredible though? So and I was thinking about this because of the polling that showed like Republicans did make a lot of gains nationwide. Like they quote won the congressional popular vote. It, they better somebody better have a golden throne somewhere for Lee Zeldin because you don't get those four wins in New York then the Democrats win this thing. A hundred percent. I mean, and like I w- I was reading people were calling it like those are his RBI. Like, yeah. like, you know, even though he got out at home or whatever, like, he, how did yeah. she win? But, oh, I guess because, well, although, although I heard men because it has show to do up. with the distribution of the votes. But what I found funny about this whole thing is that this has, in recent years, more commonly happened to the Democrats, where they quote unquote win the Senate popular vote, but like don't get seats out of it or whatever. You know how there's been all kinds of whining about that and how we need to abolish the Senate and it's undemocratic and it's this and it's that. Well, this time, the weirdness of having districts and states and stuff is worked out in favor of the Democrats. So why don't we have all the same think pieces whining about it? In fact, I did a little search to see if anybody like wrote anything about it. And here's what the Washington Post had to say on when Republicans don't see the gains that they make in the quote popular vote uh, in their actual like seat results this is called why the gop's popular vote edge hasn't translated to more house seats this is from today for many years the manner in which our country elects its leaders has been a very favorable setup for republicans not only did they win the 2000 and 2016 presidential elections despite getting fewer votes but they held the house in 96 and 2012 despite getting fewer votes republicans have regularly won more house seats than their popular vote share would suggest in large part thanks to their superior control of redistricting the 2022 election though looks like it will buck that trend If they do ultimately win by four points, they were only able to add 2% of the seats. This has understandably led to some head-scratching among Republicans, blah, blah, blah. And then they're like, well, we have incomplete results. The popular vote can be deceiving. He, they right here. Uh, they, you know, they're essentially saying like you can run up the score in some districts and only get one seat out of it and then like lose another district very narrowly, basically, is, is what can happen. And Democrats did better in races that were very close. You know, because each one is. But I just thought it was funny that they're like writing this very calm and rational explainer about why this happens when it happens to Republicans. But when it happens to Democrats, they're like, abolish the Senate. Yes. Get rid of it. This is wrong. We need a parliamentary system like they're freaking out. But if, I mean, like, that's the point about the politics is that you don't necessarily see the same thing year after year like nothing is set in stone it doesn't stay the same they were saying before 2016 like you were saying that was a big surprise election the way this one was you know they were saying in 2016 that they had the blue wall and that like because of the electoral college everything was going to go blue forever now because of their blue wall in wisconsin and michigan etc and they, they you know they were saying that they were set for life because they didn't think they could lose those states well in politics, everything can change so fast. It can shift in a minute. I mean, like, in look at how where Florida is. Look at the story we're talking about with Lee Zeldin. In another 10 years, like, what if New York is a red state? Like, you just don't know what might happen right. down the road. Things can shift in a big way in a, in a relatively, in terms of, like, history amount of time. Short okay, amount of time. Okay, uh, Dense Breast, are you ready? Mm-hmm. 51 votes in so far. Who should be the 2024 Republican presidential nominee? Donald Trump, 11%. 11.8%. DeSantis, 88.2%. There you go. This is the poll to end all polls, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I mean, I do think there still are diehard Trump people out there. And they're well, already I, yelling <clears throat> like traitor at everybody who's well, I, saying I, I, Trump needs to yes, go. Yes, and I think that I think your buddy, Montante, actually. And I think, Alice, that um, that... There's, there will still be full Trump rallies. There will still be a popular oh, yeah. appeal to Trump that is unique to him. There will be people who will, will never. He'll, he, well, I mean, he doesn't hold political rallies. He holds rock concerts. And they're fun and great. And there are people who just who saw him and feel that he sacrificed not only his fortune, but maybe his freedom uh, for them. And they will never 
They will never not love mm-hmm. him for it. And I mean, in a lot of ways, I really like Trump. Like, I like the lessons that he taught people in the Republican Party, people like Ron DeSantis, so that we're not talking about nominating a squish Romney or Jeb Bush who's going to stand there and take it on the debate stage in 2024. Like, we're not DeSantis. There, There's sort of a, a feeling amongst people who love Trump that nominating DeSantis would be reverting back to establishment world, right? Mm-hmm. But if what you're reverting back to that's the establishment is Ron DeSantis, you already won. Like, we're not even – people like, you know, people like – John McCain type of Republicans or Romney type of Republic, like they're not even in the conversation for this, right? Like, I mean, I I know there's I saw some M- Massachusetts political person on Twitter talking about if when is Charlie Baker gonna announce if he's running, and I was like, <laughs> are you like actually high right now? Like, on what planet does a Charlie Baker? T- where does he get even like one percent of the vote in a Republican primary? I mean, it, or like but, a Larry uh, Hogan well, or whoever. Well, why wouldn't if Larry Hogan's going to run? And he's a he's a lump. <laughs> Charlie Baker is more is the most popular governor governor in the country. Yeah. And why wouldn't Why would you waste that by not running? I'd give it a shot. Maybe everybody wants a squish, a, a moderate squish. I don't think they do. I don't think they do I mean, because I think the popularity of DeSantis says otherwise. I think DeSantis I think took right. all I the think good right. lessons but, from Trump, and I, I think he's right. going to run away with it. I mean, like, people like Pence and Pompeo are polling in the single digits. Where's a Charlie Baker fit into that? Where is he going to peel people off from? I, I, I don't see it yet, but I know that he's a kind of an impeccable candidate. I, I mean, mean, yeah, he's he, an impeccable candidate for 20 years ago. Vote, I don't well, know. Massachusetts Republicans voted forward for him. But um, but I think actually, uh, you go, Baker gets in there to for to uh, increase his profile, make some money. I mean, I know he's not exactly wanting for it, and I'm sure that the Dewey Hickey and whatever are going to grab him if they already haven't. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, but you know, he's got he's he's pretty ideal candidate candidate for a good uh, a cabinet seat, although he doesn't deliver Massachusetts. But still, he's. <clears throat> He was a there's a wonky project manager <clears throat> thing to be. No, I think Charlie Baker's great, but I I just don't <clears throat> see him as a potential nominee for president in the Republican Party anyway. Maybe as well. Oh, I don't see any appetite for him. But you know, people don't have an appetite for you until they do. I guess so. I you know, it was so. a running joke in early 2015 that Donald Trump of the tacky bathroom <laughs> was ever going to be a Republican. I remember how he had him on and essentially apologized to everybody for screwing around to having this fake reality TV guy on. And then it was all different. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, Dave in the chat says he wishes Trump would just assume a godfather role, turn out the base, and be a media fire starter. And, like, I mean, he could be a total kingmaker and be out here. One of the problems is, of course, is that they're trying to screw him everywhere. Everybody's trying to indict him and trying to do this Well, and and I think that's the danger. If he gets indicted, all of a sudden he'll be back in the conversation for potential nominees. And he might deserve to. If 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 they're just persecuting this guy. If they persecute him. And I think there's also somewhat of a reaction to the sort of... And it feels coordinated, but it's not because it's just a normal reaction to what happened last Tuesday. But I think this sort of uh, unified uh, people crying out for DeSantis that happened after the election and saying Trump needs to go, that uh, people sense like the same coordinated close the ranks... 2016 GOP trying to block Trump out and I think that makes them want him more but I also think it's not 2016 anymore and I think DeSantis is not that 2016 field um you know and I think we're in a different situation now but I, like I guess the only way to know is to do it so Alice, 68 that's why we count the votes 68 right votes. um who should be the 2024 Republican presidential nominee Trump 10.3 percent DeSantis 89.7 percent well, there you go. The people have spoken. <sighs> so I've heard some people talk on some of the Sunday shows as well, saying that DeSantis is who's, if DeSantis isn't who you think he is, that he's actually wimpy and this is all an act, etc. I mean, these are all lefty shows with people who hate him, but 
So you never My know. favorite is everybody saying he has a glass jaw. He right, yeah, glass I heard jaw. that too. He has a glass jaw. Well, this is just, I mean, he's apparently like a little bit of a, he's not a people person, let's put it that way. He's, you know, abrasive and he doesn't like to chill. But, but people said that same stuff about Trump, by the way. Like, I I don't see, and at least DeSantis knows how to, like, Talk, knows how to rein it in when he needs to, as demonstrated by the last few days of him not lashing out at Trump or doing anything, but just going but doing his what's job, a, recovering what's a his state from a hurricane. For a politician, he had the sitting president of the United States pitted against him for his COVID um, policies. What's a glass jaw for a politician? I mean, how much more? The world, the entire country was calling him a killer. Late night right. comedians were saying that he was death sentenced, killing people, etc. Yeah, he's he proved Cuomo. that he's not. Cuomo like that. was trying to diss him loudly. Put Cuomo's mm-hmm. little map of how I beat COVID thing. Had a little thing in F- Florida in the corner, laughing at him. Ha yeah. ha! Death rates the are up in Florida. The other thing I've seen is uh, Greenwald criticizing him for his congressional voting record being like very neocony, especially on like foreign policy stuff, and saying that he's another like he'd be like for Ukraine. Funding and all this stuff. He's a military I, guy. Of course he is. What's so, I, I don't care. Really. Well, I have Glenn no, Greenwald I'm doesn't with, like I, it. I'm with the neocons. <laughs> I like the neocons. I know you are. I, I have no problem. I I, I think the, the what about, Afghanistan um, was the right thing to do. What about Iraq Liz was the right Cheney? Thing to do. I was going to talk about her today. Some caller asked me about her. I don't I don't have any real grudge with Liz Do you Cheney. think she's going to run? I think she will run. Do you I mean, think she'll why, run independent she, or in the Republican Party? I think Republican she'll run Party. Republican Party. I think that's why she took this whole moonshot thing, just in case the world turns upside down. You know, like you know, in case sometime somehow people find themselves wanting a wartime president. You know, how they found himself in London needing Churchill. You know, who right. was a, they they said, okay, where's the biggest hawk we have around here? This guy over here. Um, yeah, no, I I I, I love Dick Cheney. I don't know. Liz Cheney, I mean, the January 6th hearings were just BS theater, obviously. Mm-hmm. And the idea that there's a flag-waving thing. I mean, it was part of the campaign, you know, to kill Republicans. And it worked, apparently, to some degree. Um, and, you know, there probably should be a real uh, – January 6th should be adjudicated in a real way, including cross-examining people. Yeah, and they should find out what the heck happened to the security at the Capitol that day because clearly there were some major failures that went on, including communication failures and potentially them on purpose not having enough security because they were worried that um, whatever National Guard or whatever they brought in would be like loyal to Trump and was going to try to attempt to overthrow the government or something. So there, I'm really curious what happened. I mean, like... I hate to be a total conspiracy theorist, but I think like the Ray Epps thing is incredibly suspect. And the fact that they treat that like a joke, like they don't have to answer any questions on it. Like, well, why isn't he in trouble? That's weird. Like everybody else is. It just seems odd. But yeah, I mean, I'd love to see that. that and, and that's the type of thing. Like if with Republicans, actually, even though it's the slimmest of possible majorities, with Republicans taking the House, like they can do some of this stuff and have some of these hearings and things, which would be really great. You know, have you seen? Um, you know that I'm dating somebody. Who are you dating? All cute American oh. girls with brown hair are named Katie. And this one, <laughs> Katie's just the best name. It's, it's it's a guarantee. Katie Britt of Alabama is a highly attractive human being. You mm-hmm. see her on my Twitter feed? Yes, I saw that you sent her. Yes. We like her very much. Very okay. much. Okay, we love her. That's okay. great. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what the certain somebody. But I'm not allowed to notice that Mike Geary has well, an outfit that looks, that looks put together? I've been told that, that Katie Britt is a mm-hmm. dead ringer for your doctor. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What else is going on? Um. Well, there's a lot of talk right now. You'll remember I mentioned this... Um. This whole thing where, like, these people, the FTX people, oh, God. are part oh. of <laughs> Why do you hate this? Oh. I hate crypto. I hate everybody involved in it. I hate the fat kid with the stupid curly brown hair. I want him in jail. And I hate his geek girlfriend who sucks. Who's... It's not his girlfriend, though. That's my point. They're part of a polycule. I want them. That means they're in a polyamorous thing where they all sleep together, but they're not, like, they're not monogamous. Put it that way. So, 
Um, yeah, it turns out his brother also was like doing a lobbying firm in DC on uh crypto stuff. Like it was the second so... biggest fundraiser for Democrats in twenty twenty two. Yep, I told you that twenty twenty two. The second biggest individual donor for Democrats in twenty twenty two. And he's very involved in like he uh worked out some crypto thing where he was helping fund the Ukraine war with crypto with Zelensky. Like you name the left wing cause he was in on it, right? Um the thing his brother ran for like it was like preventing future pandemics, this like lobbying crypto thing. And it was all about like preventing the next covid from happening and stuff the whole thing is this like incestuous mess of democratic politics and this essentially what's a money laundering scheme that they had going now there's a bunch of other big hedge funds and stuff that had money invested in this company because they had raised a ton of capital um and it's like all tied up now money's disappearing i don't think we know fully yet what's going on like there are some claims it's been hacked but it also could just be them taking out their own money like it's unclear what's going on with it and um yeah it's it's still a very rapidly unfolding situation but but i think it's interesting the focus that's happened now on the effective altruist community because of this remember i told you they're like part of this uh ea uh there's a big like forum online of them that's called less wrong so th they're often like called this, but, but there's, um, it's really sort of an odd space where, remember I talked to you before about like Slate Star Codex, that sort yes. of blog run by that guy. And he's part of that effective altruist community. There's lots of like very reactionary right wing people who are sort of closely tied to it too. I told you Elon Musk has some ties to that community. So now there's sort of this debate about like what. I mean, like, did being a part of that lead him to turn out this way and do this with this company? Like, is it something about their philosophy that leads to this? Because they tend to be very atheist. They tend to be very, uh, for lack of a better word, just rationalists. But many of them are sort of like left libertarian and, and moderate liberals, but they tend to be anti-woke because they tend to be like totally data-driven and like science-driven and uh, unfortunately, it also means that I, they think they should, like, run the world and that they'll do a better job. And if they can just, like, get their hands on things, that that they'll be able to fix everything. But um, but it is interesting, sort of, the debate about it. Like, because clearly this guy is extremely left-wing. But there are people in that universe who are not left-wing at all. Especially, um, they use it as a euphemism in that community. They call it... Um, HBD, people who believe in HBD, which is uh, human biodiversity, which is many of them believe stuff about like race and IQ that is far, far to the right about of, of I mean, like anyone uh, in mainstream politics, essentially, it, that anyone in mainstream politics would ever say out loud in a million years. But sort of that whole community, it, it's a very weird uh, sort of very online and and like i say a lot of them are polyamorous and live in polycules there's a lot of that so um it'll be interesting to see like this where you know they do get criticized for being um right wing sometimes these effective altruists because they're they tend to be anti-woke and stuff but um uh, it's interesting like how left wing this guy was and clearly his immediate circle the types of causes he was involved in and stuff. So I'm interested to see where this goes because it's probably like one of the first times many people in, in the country are even hearing about effective altruism or less wrong or anything like that. So it's going to be interesting to see like how this whole collapse affects that. <coughs> oh, all right. <clears throat> Let's listen to a little bit of Joe Biden today. Okay. He's in uh, in. He's in. He's in uh, Cambodia. It wasn't Cambodia. And now uh, that we are back together here in Cambodia, I look forward to building uh, even stronger progress than we've already made. And I want to thank the Prime Minister of Co for Colombia's leadership and the ASEAN, his ASEAN chair. <laughs> Colombia, Cambodia, no, doesn't matter. Whichever one, whichever one. Uh, I thought I had another Biden. Did I not? Did I, oh, I sent it to just you, maybe. Did I, did I screw this up? I don't know. It was really loud. Um, 
Hold on. Mm -hmm. While you're looking for that, I keep seeing more and more stuff on this uh, Canadian assisted suicide stuff Mm -hmm. that, um, remember I talked about a little while ago, was on Barry Barry Weiss's, sorry, Mm Substack, and um, she didn't write it, someone else did, but about how they're going to, next year, go to, you can apply for it just with mental problems. Like, you don't have to have a physical problem. And how, like, already 5% of the deaths in Canada are these doctor-assisted suicides. No way. Yeah. 5% of the deaths in Canada. Yes. Annual. Yes. That is effing. (laughs) Okay. And, like, so many people are, like, starting to apply for it because they're, like, in poverty and depressed. Like, and Canada's like, okay, cool. Like Does nobody know that, (laughs) that, that that's a rather permanent solution? But there's also, like... You know, young people, and I forget exactly what the age cutoff is, but it's like you, you're you 18 and you're going to apply because you're depressed. And, like, you just have to show that you can't, like, affect – that your depression isn't being treated to your satisfaction. And you can just go kill yourself. And I don't get, like, what the difference is – between that, remember how everyone was upset a while ago because Amazon sells these kits that allow you to kill yourself easily? No, but okay. Um, well, it was a thing a while back. And, um, you know, that have certain chemicals you can mix and take and you'll die or whatever, right? And you, like, people were like, Amazon shouldn't be selling these and blah, blah, blah. And, like, because they show it as, like, the recommended items to buy together because they're just trying to sell stuff. They don't know. But they, um, you know, like, I don't really get, like, what the difference it like how can it be just because a doctor is involved it makes it fine that an 18 year old wants to kill themselves and everybody's just gonna be like okay cool yep your body your choice what a like ghoulish i mean like and imagine these as a parent, are so ghoulish like, it's weird but it's weird because it's like once again the slippery slope thing turned out not to be oh, a man. fallacy what man well we've just gone way long we have yeah we gotta check it out isn't it 42 minutes yes but that's is that way long well yeah usually it we close out of 42 minutes, but hold on. Here's Biden again. Um, uh, I can't have trouble reading this. Reuters, uh, the tangent about both. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll help you in a minute. We're almost done. I'll help you in a minute. Okay, We're we just got a couple of chat chat messages. We'll just read them, okay? Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. What kind of man makes his wife go up on a roof to patch a lake? What kind of man? A spineless one. That's who you are, radio man. I challenge you, challenge you to a match at Starcade. Cage match. You, Ooh. me. So, um, one, uh, I'm not going on the roof. I don't like it up there. I don't like, um, I don't want to get hurt. And, <laughs> um, Alice's little body is made for that. She can slink right out the bathroom window and on the roof to do her little patching and things like that. And she looks good up there, too. You look handsome, Alice. You know? I went to the dump today, right? Yeah, I guess so. There's no, yeah, I guess so, Alice. I went to the dump today. Good job. You need to batten down the hatch, though, for tomorrow. Good job. Hey, Tom. Yes. Instead of bidding on a cribbage table, Ooh. maybe you should be bidding on a roofer and a carpenter. <laughs> that could be money well spent. Well, I am rolling the dice here. That uh, In fairness, Alex... I have had two roofers here. Yes. And they're not sure where the water is getting into the roof either. Right. And they have given me estimates for replacing the roof, but they're not sure that would solve the problem of the water coming in. So... That's where I am with that right now. Also, some of the estimates were ridiculous, so I'm not. Is there a new Minahan today? Uh, I don't think so. He might be doing trivia. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, here we go. Um, uh, I want to update everybody on the, the poll, Alice. Okay. 80 and 9 votes. Trump, 12.4%. DeSantis, 87.6%. There you go. Decisive, I would say. Decisive. So we'll see. Well, we'll at so... least on Twitter, but a lot of voters aren't on Twitter. That's the thing. Uh, impossible. Impossible. This is all of them. Uh, Trish so... wants to start a GoFundMe to buy you a better computer so that the podcast can be two hours long every day. Oh, 
if this is all we were doing, I would love to have it be two hours long. Believe me. Yes. All right. Just in time. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. You can join the live streams uh, by joining our Patreon. That's at patreon.com slash burn barrel. If you don't want to watch it live or you don't care, um, you can also always watch it for free uh, on YouTube or Rumble, um, just not live. And you can find all the other places to listen at burnbarrelpodcast.com, including Apple Podcasts, where you can leave us a five-star review if you feel so inclined, and uh, all the other places you like to listen. Say la vie.